Okay, mine damer og herrer, det er min øh, utrolig store fornøjelse at præsentere Jeremy Newsom øh, i dag, som øh, jo ikke bare er CEO for Real Trading USA, men også er en af de mest succesfulde trader, som, som jeg, kan, jeg, jeg, kan, jeg kan nævne. Uh, hans, hans trading historie er jo helt vildt jeg er sikker på at de fleste af jer har set hans video derude der fortæller om hvordan han var nødt til at låne penge af den koreanske mafia uh, og, og, og med, 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 med trusen om at blive slået ihjel hvis ikke han betale dem tilbage og så rent faktisk lykkes ikke bare at betale penge, de penge tilbage igennem trading men, uh, men også betale alle de andre penge han har lånt tilbage og nu er, har uh, så mange millioner at han ikke rigtig ved hvad han bruge dem til så i dag, der vil han snakke om Elliot Wave, og han vil snakke om trader, psykologi og alt det andet, han nu vil byde ind med. So without any further ado, uh, Jeremy, I know that you have no idea what I just said, except for a few snippets here and there. Um, please tell me, tell us all that you know about Elliot Wave and trader psychology and all the other good stuff that you have for us. Everything. I'm, I'm going to talk about everything, all of it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really amped. And for those who are here, thank you for being here. Most importantly, I really appreciate you all with uh, helping us with our mission, which is to enrich lives. Doesn't matter what language we speak, laughter sounds the same. And the reason I'm saying that essentially is because humanity needs more wisdom, which is applied knowledge, right? We can learn things all day, but if we don't do anything with it, It's useless. Type in a five if you would like to make more money trading the markets. So you can use that money to amplify your life. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you Elliott Wave theory, but I'm going to do it in air quotes because I mess it up. And I have technicians all the time tell me what a dum dumb I am because I mess it up. I really just do an awful presentation of teaching Elliott Wave. What I will do is teach Jeremy Wave, <laughs> which is my interpretation of, of Elliott Wave, but also I'm gonna teach you what matters because one of my skill sets, in my opinion, is diluting complex subjects that are difficult and making it easy for dumb people like me. My IQ is maybe 86, max, maximum 86. But I don't think you have to be extremely intelligent to learn the markets. I don't think you have to have tons of money to make money in the markets. I think anyone can do it from anywhere in the world. It's all about the mindset and the belief of, is it possible? So before I'm gonna get into Elliott Wave, I just want to blow everyone's mind for a moment, for a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna share the screen and we're gonna look at Tesla. And the mind blowing aspect of this for me is going to be the simple fact of how much money is being traded in the markets. Because I want you to sit down and think for a moment. I just had a mentorship with our, with our buddy Pete uh, just two days ago, and I kind of shared the same information with him, and he thought it was really, really spectacular. Because once you realize the game that you're playing and you understand the level that you have to play it at, you really, really go and think to yourself, wait a minute, I need to amplify everything that I'm doing right now. I'm doing okay, but I'm playing small and I have to figure out a way to not play small anymore. So check this out for just a moment. I'm looking at a three minute chart on Tesla. I'm gonna pick a random candle, no specific time, no specific importance, just looking at a candle on the screen. 8.54 my time, 9.54 American US time. Almost 30 minutes after the market opened, I'm gonna hover over this candle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight and show you how many shares were bought on this insignificant, irrelevant, non-important candle at an insignificant and relevant time of the day. Who can see that number? Type that number into the chat pane if you can see it. Let me hover over it. There we go. Go ahead and type it into the chat. Who can see that number? Five nine, four. So 594,000. Then what you have to do is you have to multiply that by the price of the stock. 594 point 
one three five thousand times seven hundred and twenty U.S. dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends from around the entire world, that represents approximately four hundred and twenty-seven million dollars U.S. dollars transacted on Tesla in a three-minute window. Three minutes. Are you not entertained? Half a billion, not in three weeks, not in three months, not in three days, not in three hours, in 180 seconds. Type a nine if that's mind-blowing. The reason I'm bringing this up is because this is the scale of the markets that you are participating in. You were here playing a limitless game. Limitless. There is no end to how much money you can make in the market. So allow you, allow your body and your mind and your spirit and your soul to get fueled by the dreams and by the possibilities of what if. Because once you remove some of these limiting beliefs from your life, you will have to replace them with limitless beliefs. For example, is it possible for someone on this phone call to make 5% of that number in three minutes? And what's 5% five, what's five of 400? Let's, let's do that math real quick. Uh, it's $21 million. Is that possible? Mathematically, it is. It's doable. So be fueled by the opportunities that are there. And one of the opportunities that I love to use and to interact with is to understand Elliott Wave. Here's how I do it. I look for wave three. So for those of you who might not be familiar with Elliott Wave, Elliott Wave is a principle that says the markets moves in a structure of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then after that wave structure, you have a small correction, okay? This is essentially what Elliott Wave Theory is. Now, obviously you all know it can be going up or it can be going down. Either direction, it doesn't matter. All directions are comprised of five waves and then a corrective cycle of some kind. What I look for is I try to look for wave three. Because if I can find wave three, wave three generally should stand out like a sore thumb. It should be very obvious and very apparent or kind of obvious and kind of apparent what wave three is going to be. Now, I do have an entirely free product and program on Elliott Wave, and you can watch it for free anytime that you want where I go into a little bit more depth. But in this particular webinar, what I'm going to do is just share with you the characteristics of wave three. We're going to look at some charts, and I'll be happy to answer any questions any trades that you might have taken, review anything that you want to do. I'm here to pour into you and to do my absolute best to add light, love, happiness into your life. So get some of the questions and get some charts ready. All right. So wave three, here are some characteristics. If you're taking notes, this is important to write down. Wave three has tons of volume. Wave three has loads of candles that are big in a certain color. So I'll say color. If you're bullish and you're using white candles, look for a lot of white candles. If you're bearish and you're going down, look for a lot of bearish candles. Okay. You guys good on that so far? That's it. <laughs> That's what I look for. Bang. I'm done. I look for wave threes and I try to have it match this little drawing over here. All right. So ready? Check it out. What I'm about to do is take that exact same drawing I just did on the screen, and I'm going to help you find wave three. All right. Not the best drawing in the world, but I think you guys get the picture. This was a trade on Tesla today. What I'm going to do after this is I'm going to go look at a trade that your boy Peter took today on AMD, and I'm going to help you walk through the Elliott Wave principle of that trade setup. But if I scrunch the chart enough, if I really scrunch the chart, there we go. Type in a five if that's pretty spellbinding. Because I was just a freehand random drawing. I wasn't trying to emulate. I'm just drawing like, hey, this is how Elliott waves work. And boom, there's an Elliott wave right in front of your right in front of your face on a random time frame on a random stock. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what could have easily been an understanding and an application of how to take this trade. And if this isn't worth 
worth the price of admission for you to come here today. Uh, ask Pete for your money back because it will be absolutely stupendous. Why can't I back trade? Give me three seconds. What am I doing incorrect here? Exit replay mode. Hmm. It's not letting me replay. It's never done that before. Change alert. No. Jump to. No. Weird. All right. I can solve this. Let's try a different stock really quick. Google. Nope. Nope. Ah, technical issues are the best. No big deal. Tesla. I'm just going to cover it up. You guys can't quite see it. Boop. Oh, you can still see it. <laughs> I was trying to find like a really cool. Uh, there we go. This will work. Ah, oh, Jeremy's the goat. Okay. I am smart. Now, here we go. What I'm looking for is I'm trying to determine what is a wave three. Now, wave three follows what number? If you can count, this is first grade stuff. Wave three follows what number? One, two, three, four, five. All right. So we have to, we have to be looking for something like this, like this, and like this. One, two, three. Can you see a one, two, three on Tesla? One, two, three. Now, if you're saying, well, why didn't you go one, two, three? Well, you could have, but here's another Elliott wave principle. Wave three should always have a three or five wave inside of it. So you should always have a very clear, very obvious, and very succinct and easy to find three structure or five structure. So that's a little fun bonus for you. So looking at this bonus, if I'm looking at this particular chart, I'm seeing to myself, okay, this is a one, two, three, four, and then I, I would expect a wave five to happen. But even if you got that wrong, and even if you said to yourself, okay, I'm, I counted it entirely different. I, I counted this as a one, two, three. Is that a problem? Well, not necessarily because notice volume was good. Notice if this was a wave three, you expect what to come after? A wave four. And are you buying a wave four? Sure. So you buy at this price point when Tesla was at 714 a share, and then it pops into a wave five or you sell it and you sell it at $724 per share. How much profit is that? That's $10 per share on Tesla, $10 per share. If you're trading with a thousand shares on Tesla, that's $10,000 in approximately seven minutes. Type a nine in the chat pane if you want to make $10,000 in seven minutes. I'm all for that because, I mean, how many trades do you really need to make? You don't need to make that many trades for that to be an amazing, amazing portion of your life. Team, that's doable. That is very doable. Like, it's not that hard. You just have to believe that you can do it. Because, again, if we're backtrading this, although I, for some reason I can't, ironically enough, backtrade this, what you'll also notice is there's a particular chart pattern in here. Type in a four if you can see a very beautiful double bottom. So I'll draw for you in green. One, two. If you counted this as a wave three, perfect. You're thinking, all right, here's a wave three. Here's tons of volume. All things look great. Here's the double bottom. There it is. Here's the neckline. The stock closes above the neckline. Type of 44, if both myself and Pete have taught you, probably for free, how double bottoms work, how to find them, and how to trade them. For free, right? We didn't hide how to do this. So here's your double bottom. Here's your neckline. Did this close above the neckline? Yes. Did it retest the neckline? Yes. Could that retest of the neckline have been theoretically a wave four? Yes, which you buy, yes, and then sell in the wave five when it's higher. Yes, 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 and yes. Step into one if your mind is already blown. Because all you're doing is going down the, is this setup valid? That's it. Okay, here's what's cool. If I'm looking at this, is there a particular strategy that I've also taught everyone for free that's also available on this particular trade? The answer to that question is also yes. And that is the tin EMA. Here's a bear candle right here, closing above the red line. Type in a five if that is painfully, blatantly, obviously, gorgeously, 
accurate. All right, I expect a lot of fives because that is a bear candle and it is closing above the 10. So therefore, therefore, what you could also easily create and easily surmise would be this. If you're doing a wave count and you think this is a one and you think this is a two and you think this is a three and you think this is a four and you want to wait for more information, more validation, more confirmation, more whatever, and you're thinking to yourself, all right, I want this to break out. Yes or no? Could you set up an entry that says, if we go above the bear account that closed above the 10, then I will get into the trade? And this would be your setup. And you're waiting for it to go higher to really prove that it's a wave higher in that move. Could you do that? Yes or no? Of course you can. You have the Elliott wave. You're thinking, all right, this might be a wave four. Here's a bear candle closing above the 10 EMA. You have the trade set up and you have an entire three minutes of non-triggering candles of non-triggering setups to go, all right, this is a possible trade. And then boom, you get triggered in. So if we get triggered in here and we think this is a one, two, three, four, five, if that is our current count, what should we expect to happen after that? Do you guys remember me drawing this? One, two, three, four, five. What should happen next? It starts with a C. A little corrective cycle. That is exactly correct. Corrective cycle looks a lot like this. Boom, boom, boom. There's the corrective cycle. And then a new wave begins. So when I was looking at Tesla this morning, viewing this as a one, two, three, expecting the wave four. And as I'm expecting a wave four, I get also two bare candles both closing above the 10 EMA, both with almost the exact same high, 725 and 787. I can then take the entry, put the entry here, put the stop loss below this bullish candle and ride up wave five. Wait for wave five to make a new high. Wait for I'm nice and profitable and begin to take some profits up here. Type in a three. if That is pretty blatantly obvious as well. How cool is this stuff? Yeah, it's really, but again, it's nothing masterfully unique because still at the end of the day, all you're using in this situation would have been the bearish candles closing above the 10 EMA, AKA the 10 EMA strategy. That's all you're using. And if you're implementing Elliott wave, thinking to yourself, I think this is a one, two, three, four. Here's the wave four. I'm going to ride this up for a wave five. All you do is have additional biases and additional information to say, hey, this trade could really work quite well. And it did. That would have been a really nice trade. You could have also made 10 points on this trade as well. So if you're looking at a long position, and we all know our rules on the TNMA strategy, we're looking for that beautiful 1.2. Crazy. 1.2 was right here a.k.a. the exact high of Tesla today. Ladies and gentlemen, that is so cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Simon says, you make it look easy. It is, bro. It is easy. That's what's cool. All we have to do is plan this ahead of time. And we say, all right, this is what I'm going to do. On Tesla today, I'm going to wait for this particular trade, this particular setup, and take my trade. Because imagine if you're going, all right, well, Newsom, what about this candle? This was a bullish candle right here that closed below the 10 EMA. Why didn't you take that trade bearish? To which I would say, well, what if you did? Let's play that game. Let's say that you had a stop loss here. And you had a bearish entry right below that candle. And you said to yourself, I'm going to play this candle bearish, expecting the stock to go down and make money on the downside. What would have happened in this situation? Easy. You would lose. <laughs> That's it. That's the answer. You would have lost money. Congratulations. I do that every day, every single day. Is today Monday? Cool. Newsom is about to lose some money on a day trade. It happens. Lose less money than you win and everything will be fine. Because if you lose on the bearish trade, Fantastic. Take the bullish trade. Why are you not doing that? Because you're scared. You were scared. You were worried. You have attachment to money. You have this mental block. 
You're not being fueled and led by how amazing, how cool, and how incredible money is. So it's, it's stressing you out. Don't worry about it. Take the loss. You lose on that trade for sure. And then get back into the winning trade. Entry somewhere right around here. Stop loss somewhere right around here. And make your money on the upside. Exit up here. You win more than you lose. Boom. You're a profitable trader. This is it, team. It's not extremely, extremely overcomplicated. However, since I can't back trade, that's okay. Let's just kind of back up here for a moment. And let's see if we can find what wave three would have looked like on Tesla. Because my summation is, if this is a one, if this is a two, if this is a three, this is a four. Maybe. Right? Uh, maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> What about yesterday? What let's go look at yesterday. What would have been a very, very obvious wave three? Okay, again, ask yourself what has tons of bullish candles, tons of bullish volume, tons of bullish direction. What would have been an obvious wave three? If you're looking at somewhere right around here, your answer is correct. This is obviously a wave three of some kind. If you didn't say that, fine. You said you definitely said this. One of those two are absolutely a wave three because you're looking at something like one, two, three, four, five. That's fine. Or if this is a, if you're just going, this is a one, two, three, did we have a wave four? And then did we have a wave five? <laughs> Come on. This is the coolest thing ever. This is epic. I know you're all smiling ear to ear right now because this is magic. It's absolute magic. Does it always work? Absolutely not. Can it help you identify when you should be certainly taking a trade? Yes. And if you can sit back and go, I need to take this trade. I must take this trade. I want to make a bunch of money so I can go help impact the world and be an amazing person. It can pull you faster. Let's go back to this particular trade um, over here. Even though I can't back trade, and I apologize for that. I have no idea why. If we had to look at this, could you call this right here a wave three, boys and girls? Yes or no? Tons of bullish volume, tons of bullish candles, right? Let me just get this little box here. So if we're looking at this and we can't see anything else on the right, if we're asking ourselves, could this be a wave three? One, two, three. Okay, it could. Things check out. Bear, bull, uh, bull volume is coming in. You have a bunch of bull candles. Beautiful. So doesn't that mean that we should get some type of pullback? Well, there was the pullback right there, and bang, there was the final move. How could you play that pullback? Easily. Here's your bear candles closing above the 10 EMA, which is right there. Enter above those, stop below those, exit right there at 1.2, which is the exact high of the day. Team, this is easy. Let's go pick on Pete for a second. I love picking on Pete. It's one of my favorite things to do in the world. We're going to go look at his trade on AMD. We're going to analyze the heck out of this thing. All right, so here is AMD. And we're going to go and look at and find a wave three, and then I'm going to go analyze his trade setup and show you guys how great it was. All right. So let's uh, imagine that we're looking at this right here. Let's just go forward one candle. You have no idea why I can't back trade, but if we're looking at this particular setup and I did take this trade with Pete, although I didn't make nearly as much money as he made on it. Uh, let me kind of scooch this in for a second. All right. So if we're looking at this setup, can we count a one, two, three wave structure? One, two, three. Okay. At the time, good volume was coming in. Understandable. But what if you're counting like this? One, two, three, four, five. What if you did that wave count? Would you expect a correction? There's your correction. 
What if you counted it as a one, two, three? Would you expect to weigh four? And then what would you do? Expect to weigh five. What if you counted this today as a one, two? All of this was a three. Would you expect a retracement? Absolutely. Here's your pullback. Where's the wave five? Didn't happen, at least not yet. So if you counted it that way, and let's say you got in somewhere over here, what would have happened? The answer is you would have lost. That's okay. You're going to do that from time to time. So if you count this as a one, two, and all this is a wave three, on the wave four, if we're playing the Tinny MA strategy, after that wave count, did you get a bare candle that closed above the Tinny MA that then went higher that would have triggered you in inappropriately bullish? And the answer is no. So what if you could just combine both strategies where you have bare candles closing above the Tinny MA, uh, like, I don't know, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you're using some wave counts. You're going, okay, where should I play? Bullish. I don't know. Above any of those prices would be great. So let's go look at our boy Pete's uh, trade setup and just see how he did. All right. Pete came in here. Where is his trade? All right. Perfect. So here we go. Our boy Pete got 2.5 R's on this trade. Ladies and gentlemen, type in a nice PS into the chat pane for our boy Pete, who crushed it, made two and a half R's on this trade. Beautiful work. So what he did is he saw all this movement, all of this trade, and then it had a pullback. He bought that pullback with a stop below a really, really strong candle. The trend was already bullish, and he said to himself, you know what? Looks good. I like this. I don't know if it's going to work, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy low and sell high. I'm not going to buy here and hope it goes to here. I'm going to buy there and hope it goes higher. Buy into a bullish trend. This is a three-minute chart. So even in his mind, even if he didn't do this appropriately, let's pretend this is a one, two, three, because remember, that was my count earlier. Do you guys remember that? Type of three, if you remember that. If that was the case, and this is the wave four. Did he buy the wave four and did it turn into be a nice wave five? And the answer, after we return with a series of commercials, the answer is yes. That is the answer. That's exactly what happened. That is precisely and identically what happened. Mm. Did he know that was going to work? We never know anything. What we can do is we can create and we can plan and then we can lose as small as possible. That's it. That's all we can do. So great trade, Pete. Well done. Now your, your number one job is to not give back that profit tomorrow and Friday and make sure you end the week profitably. All right. Um, let's go look at this trade. Uh, this is Mike's trade on Tesla. We'll just go analyze this one for a second. So Mike is analyzing this. And again, let's just have a fun time here and say that this is a one, two, three, four, five wave structure. Did we get a correction after that wave structure? And the answer is yes. In fact, we didn't get a small correction. We got a big one. One, two, three, four, five. Where's wave three? Boom. All these bear candles. How would you have known that at the time? You wouldn't have. But what you're looking at is he, he noticed here's a hammer getting taken out. This purple line, there's the 100 SMA on a weekly chart. So he knew that. And when this hammer got taken out, he entered right around the 100 simple moving average. His stop was above the high of the day. And he rode this down into a 1.2 R target. Did Mike do a wave count on this one? I don't know. But if you sat down and looked at this and go, this is a one, two, three, four, five, and it's correcting, he could know and potentially surmise that, okay, if this correction's over, I'm going to be wrong and it's going to go higher. That's fine. But I have the 100 simple moving average on a weekly chart here. I know that if, if it breaks this pivot because of Elliott wave theory, it's going to turn into a one, two, three, four, five structure most likely and i'm gonna do my absolute best to ride that puppy down type in a seven if that makes sense 
because he's just adding different things. He still took a 10 EMA trade, right? This little light yellow line that you can probably barely see. These are still bull candles closing below the 10. So he didn't do anything crazy. He still took the 10 EMA trade, but he noticed, hey, this hammer is getting taken out. Hey, we're failing the 100 simple moving average on a weekly chart. Hey, my risk reward is pretty good. Let me try this thing. Let me make it happen. And that's what he did. Pretty cool stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to do now is just pause for a bit and open up the floor so you can turn on your camera, your microphones, whatever you prefer, and ask me questions or throw in charts in the chat pane or let me help you for the next 20 minutes or so and just pour into you and be here and just assist you with whatever questions you have. And I can review individual trades and help you determine what Elliott Wave count you tick and all that kind of good stuff. It's going to be magical. Pete says, let's go. Yeah, I'm here. Whatever question. You guys can throw a chart in, a chat, whatever you want. I am here for you. Ready to crush. All right, guys, this is your chance. Woo! Find some of the trades you've done the past few days, swing and uh, days, and let's, uh, let's do it. <laughs> Henrik says, let me go find some terrible trades so Jeremy can tell me what I did wrong. Okay, hey, Mark's got one. Bro, that's a good thing if you have to look for terrible trades. I mean, just go get some from Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a bunch. We all have. We should all have a few bad trades, but that's that's a good problem to have, man. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. All right. So this, Hi, this Jeremy. Hit me, brother. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. I, I, I'm not sure, but I just did like the wave count if I'm like totally wrong or is that somewhat correct? Uh, great question. So this is a this is a daily chart, I'm assuming? No, that's three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, got it. Um, you're very, very close. You're very close. I like, I like it a lot. The one small, small thing I forgot to mention about wave threes, one tiny, tiny thing. Wave three cannot be the shortest. Okay. So that's one small tweak that I didn't mention. So you did everything correct. But that would, what that would do is this would actually add some complexity to your trade. This would be a one here, which means this is the two which means all of this is the three, and this is probably a four. So we probably, whatever this stock is, trade down and then bounce higher is my guess. I don't know if this is today or not, but that, that's a very, very likely count. Um, if this is a one, two, then this is a three, this is a four, this is a five, and this is the correction. But either way, what you're noticing is you absolutely did find the most bullish move right here, and that's the correct thing that we're looking for. So in this situation, my assumption is that we're going to correct into here and then I'm going to wait for a 10 EMA strategy to show itself if it does. And so if I can find a reason to go bearish, I can because my assumption is it might correct. But if I can't find any reason to go bearish on a larger time frame or whatever, then my guess is to play it bullish after it has its correction with a bear candle closing with the 10 EMA. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, let's see tomorrow morning. This is like on the German stock market. So it, it will Love open it. tomorrow morning, yeah. All right, cool. Well, right, you, uh, thanks. you hit me back up and let me know what it does. Um, yep. If I had to guess, I bet that this goes down to 34.13, wicks up to here and does this and closes at 35.93 tomorrow. All right, cool. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> You're welcome, brother. Welcome. Uh, Henrik says, let's assume... I did this for teaching. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. So we have Tesla on a three minute chart. So you were shorting this trade. Brilliant. Okay. I love this. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. This is a terrible short, but that's good to know that this is just an absolutely awful short because there are three factors to this that stand out to me pretty much immediately. Now, again, keeping in mind, I didn't do this trade either. It's absolutely okay. It doesn't matter what happens. But the point is, I love, love, love studying other people's charts, including my own, including my own trades, so that we can really analyze what we miss or what was interesting. So first and foremost, uh, this was just a few days ago because I remember this trade um, on Tesla. This was a bear candle closing above the 10 EMA, number one. Number two, this big bull candle closes above the pre-market resistance, closes above the high of the day, and closes above yesterday's high. 
and it did it with very, very good volume. So that tells me bears are trapped, bullish is the predominant trend. So my assumption at this point is all of these bull candles have to be some kind of wave because they do have really good volume. So I would have counted this as a one, this is a two, this is a three, which means what's most likely gonna happen. Well, ass assuredly, it's going to retest the previous high, retest the previous high of the range, have a wave four pullback, and this gives you an opportunity to buy here. So the exact place you shorted was the exact place you should have bought. Obvious now, I get that, but looking at the chart, we can go, okay, let me create some rules and go practice this for the next few trades because one of two things would happen in this scenario. If this is not a wave three and that's not a wave four and this is not a wave five, then it means only one other thing, that this is a wave one, this is a wave two, all of this is a three. Tesla had one more four on the day and then moved higher. One of those two things happened. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's, uh, I believe it's the first one where this was almost the high of the day. I think it was a one, two, three, four, five. And then we had a little bit of a correction. We just kind of chilled the rest of the day. Can't fully remember, but that's a great, great setup. I love that you looked at it. Um, and yeah, man, good stuff. All right. Fantastic. So feel free to throw any other trades or any other charts, uh, team. And what we can do is, I mean, looking at AMD, right? If we have to go back here, this was my, the very first time I looked at this today, uh, after my first trade. So the stock came back to the low of the day. So from here to here. And right there was a bear candle closing above the 10. You would, have been, you would have been able to notice that this is some type of wave structure. And then this is some type of wave structure. My assumption looking at it right now is this would have been a wave three. So if I can view that as a wave three and I can see that there's a bear candle closing above the 10 EMA, could I set that up as old resistance, new support? That's the place I could have gotten in anyway. And in fact, you have two opportunities to do that there and there. You use that pink line as your limit buy, you use this line as your stop loss, and you're anticipating this to be a one, two, three, four, five. What do you guys think? Magic or magic? It takes practice, but once you can really get a good grasp on what you would feel like is a wave count, because again, I do understand the fact that everyone's like, Jeremy, waves are uh, personal like the subjective, that's what I'm looking for. Waves are subjective. Dog, almost everything in life is subjective. <laughs> like what, what isn't subjective, right? Marcus says, usually wave three has to be the biggest move. Do you try to identify wave two to ride wave three? Um, if I can, yes, but I usually just try to wait, identify wave three because if I can easily find the biggest move, I don't have to ride the biggest move to make money. If you can buy or close to buy the bottom of four and ride up five, you're doing well. Because the answer, usually it can be the biggest, but wave five can also be the biggest. Wave three just can't be the shortest. But wave five can be massive, man. So if this is a one, two, three, and I can recognize that and I miss it, I, I always try to play a good wave four, and that would have been a wave five. Because for me, if you buy this at 84.20 and now it's 85.20, if I buy that on 5,000 shares, and it, that just moved $1, how much money is that in essentially an hour? All right, 5,000 bucks. And your stop loss could have been here. Uh, 8420, 86, uh, A360, that is 80 cents of risk. So you risk 80 cents to make a dollar. What a great trade. And that's what day trading is all about. Because for me, if I take this trade, and I make five grand, I'm like, I'm excited about it. How awesome. I'll pull some of that money out immediately. I'll start paying some things off. I'll start buying some assets. I'll do some things that are intriguing and good and useful. And then of course, from there after that, I will do my absolute best to protect myself the rest of the week. All right. So this is, oh, look, so this is Hendrix trade on AMD. This looks a lot like the trade I just analyzed. <laughs> so Good job, man. Well done. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. 
The biggest key to trading, my dear friends, is once you make your money, keep it, protect it, use it, spend it, be smart. Right? Be smart. If you can make four to six R's a month consistently, that can change your life very, very, very quickly. Very quickly. Because if you're trading with a $2,000 risk and everyone here can do that easily, simply tomorrow, essentially, six R's a month can be 12,000 US dollars per month. I mean, that's not that bad. If you, if you just did that for, for three to four months, I mean, just imagine all the bills you could pay off, all the assets you can start buying. That's really, 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 really cool. It adds up quick. All right. Um, Anders is sending me one. This is AMD. This is also today. Stupendous. Great trade. So what's phenomenal about this is this is exactly the trade that I just mentioned to a T. So Anders and Henrik both took this trade. Um, same style of trade. You can see the moving average is kind of crossing. This, this is obviously a pivot. So again, for me, I would, have, I would have drawn this as a one, two. If I'm in this, I know that this isn't a wave three. It can't be a wave three because it's too small. So the way I'd be drawing that at that point is I would say, okay, if this is, this could be a one, two, three, right? Which means it's going to be a wave four. And I hold this for a lot longer. I hold it for a little bit more because I can start doing the wave count, thinking to myself, this is a one, two, and this is some type of wave three right here. If I can start building and factoring in my trade, what this allow what this would allow me to do is have my stop. Once the bounce happens, which is this candle right here, I can then move my stop loss, uh, Anders, from where you had it to here, and then increase my target to go for a little bit more. I love that trade. Uh, Anders Hendrick, congratulations. That's a beautiful, beautiful win for you both. And uh, I love it. So those are just examples of how you can implement Elliott Wave to go, all right, well, I'm already in the trade. You do an Elliott Wave count and you start realizing, wow, I might have bought Wave 2 or I might have bought Wave 4. How can I hold it? How can I move my stop? And what can I do to expect a little bit more? Make sense? So Anders, does that help a little bit about what you could do to potentially hold for more? Because really, the way I will hold for more is it's all about my stop movement. If I can move my stop to here based on a potential wave count, because again, the takeaway in this wave count was this. I know that this, is, this could be a one, this could be two, but this could not be a three after you get triggered in because that was already the smallest of the waves. So I know, I know that that can't be a wave three. So this is a one, this is a two. And inside of wave three, we can have a one, two, three, four, five very easily. Because remember, wave three oftentimes has a five wave structure inside of it, as I mentioned earlier. So this wave five structure, when Anders is in it, he starts to see this bounce. This candle comes in, he moves the stop and go, holy smokes, I might still be in a wave three. This is definitely some type of strong wave structure. Let me hold for a little bit more to just see how far wave five can go. So I'll increase my stop. I'll increase my target. And, and let me walk away from the computer for 20 minutes. Then you come back and you do another wave count. You move your stop up to here. And then you exit up here and just take a really, really beautiful win. So, I mean, congratulations, both of you gentlemen, because I think that's a fantastic trade. And now it's about keeping it and protecting it, using those money to do something that you need to. Simon says, when you talk about the 10 EMA, when do you reset? Um, usually a close above or below the 10 EMA. Uh, I, will, I will reset the, uh, reset the trade. So let's look at, I don't know, let's just look at AMD, for example. Um, all right. So right here with this candle, type in a two if you can see that that closed below the 10 EMA, Simon. I know, I know you can see that it did that. So closes below. So now I'm resetting the count. I'm going, all right, cool. Counts reset. I'm now looking for a bullish candle to close below the moving average. Or the next bear candle that closes above the moving average will be the first one. So I'm waiting for a bullish candle. Obviously, we don't get those. 
So when this candle right here comes in, that's the first bear candle closing above the 10. And ironically, that one and that one have very similar highs, which makes this trade, in my opinion, even better. Another I reason why. My mic here. Hey, oh, am I? Yes, this is awesome. That's my goal is to blow some minds. That I is just my need goal. to know, Jeremy, do you reset it again when you go a little more to the right, when you go under the tin EMA and the yep. next bear candle, you can take the trade again? Yep, exactly. So when this one closes below right here, uh, the next one is it resets. So right there would be the opportunity to take another trade if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah, great question. But so right here, you see how it did not close below or not really. Um, that wouldn't be a recount. That doesn't mean that you can't take this trade or you can't maybe add a position or maybe sprinkle in some share size, but yeah. it's not the first bear candle. So once it closes above or closes back below. Uh, so for example, this candle here, when it closes above the 10, I'm back to going, okay, I'm down to take anything. This candle technically does close above the 10. So I would have set up a bullish entry, entry here, stop there. Obviously that didn't trigger, no big deal. If this right here would have been a super, super small bullish candle, it would have been my preferred setup. Uh, but this candle right here came in. Um, so entry would have been shorting there, stop probably right there. And this would have been 1.2 right there. Yep. Okay. Thanks. My pleasure, brother. You're welcome. Marcus says, that's the trade I did today in the fund account. Should have gone long when I exited my short. Click on that. Um, profit. Yes, there's a, okay. S and P index. Give me three seconds. How to read limit sell at previous support stop loss. Should have gone long when I exited my yes. short. I, I shorted, you know, at the revamp. Like uh, at, uh, I see. Yeah. You shorted there. Yeah. Yeah. Exited here. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Beautiful trade. Yeah. yeah. So fantastic. And I, I agree. You should have gone long, but here's what I can say. Knowing the Elliott wave, right? After you could, you, after you practice this, would you agree that this is probably some kind of wave three in here? Yep. So you have huge, huge movement, huge bullish volume, all those good things. It makes a new high, blah, blah, blah. Here's the dip and here's your wave five. And then here's your correction, A, B, C, boom. And then it starts again. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Nice. Easy stuff, dude. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. Latest AMD trade for, you can't open this chart layout. I think there might be a button or a, a, a price or a number inserted incorrectly somewhere in there, Maddie. So right now, if I'm looking at AMD, I would be very happy for a bull candle to close below the 10 here. Um, we'll see in the next three or four minutes if we get one, but this is a double top. One, two, three. We've already done this wave count. So if this is a four, this is a five. That makes sense. Or or another count could be one, two, three, four, five. Either way, this is a corrective cycle, A, B, C. So if it kind of hangs out and goes higher, fantastic. But if it hangs out, gets a little weak, and then you start getting some bull candles, this is a nice stop loss right there. It'd be a really good risk reduction, risk reward trade to take. So this is how I would play this kind of stuff in real time. So team, this was a lot of fun. I hope this was helpful. I know that Pete will send me this recording. He'll send you guys the recording and his whole, his whole team. Um, biggest thing that I would love to say is I, I need you all to go tell the world that this stuff exists. I know you are, and I know you have been. But let's all push back one of the biggest human fears, which is the fear of rejection, the fear that we're not enough. Let's figure out a way to push past that. Because in reality, if individuals can learn this, it doesn't matter if they make money doing it or not. Let's get past this. That, that's irrelevant. Oftentimes, in order to change your life, you have to have the belief that you can do something. Once you have the belief that you can do something, you can start shifting and making huge, huge changes. Really good example. I have a buddy who just texted me, just texted me. His name is John, uh, lives in New York City. I stayed with him three nights ago because our flight got canceled. And, uh, well, 
there was a delay coming back from Croatia or whatever, and whatever, I missed a connecting flight. So I stayed with my buddy, John, and John is an awful trader. I don't care if he watches this. He knows it. He's not the greatest trader in the world. He has too many things going on. He has a business. He has a wife. He has family. He has all the things, right? He doesn't make time to actively trade frequently. However, learning how to trade opened his eyes and opened his mind to what's capable and what's possible when it comes to money. And he makes pretty good money doing his business. So he's starting to buy businesses and real estate and houses and rent them out and so on and so forth, because that was a, a mindset shift for him to do things better and bigger to make more money in his life. And since he got introduced to trading about two and a half, three, four years ago, his life has magnified exponentially and he's become a lot more wealthy, not through trading, right? He's actually lost a little bit of money in trading, but everything else has dramatically improved because he's thinking consciously more about money. He's protecting it. He's being wise with it. He's understanding that you need to spend it, that you need to save it, that you need to invest it, that you need to let it flow and you need to let it move. And my boy, John is honestly just a few, two or three years away from being totally 100% financially free, which in my definition means that your income, passive income surpasses your expenses monthly. That's the definition I think of financial freedom. Passive income exceeding monthly expenses. So the process is there. Simon says, I'm still in the first Tony step, wasting my account and calling my wife to borrow more money, but I'm learning. <laughs> hey, that's all right, ma'am. That is okay. Uh, everyone's done it. Everyone will do it. Just keep in mind that it's, it, it's easy to make, right? Because if I was brand new in my journey, I would absolutely do the funded account pro program, probably put in a few 500 bucks put in a few bullets, right? Buy like five or six, $500 trading accounts, go out and sell something to create three or $4,000 worth of revenue. doesn't matter if it's a motorcycle or old shoes or whatever, a couch, go and sell some stuff, make some money that's not hers, make some money that's mine, make some money that I earned, take that money, buy some fun account and put myself in an environment where it matters because it's easy. Making money is easy. Once you tell yourself that and you remove the attachment that it's hard and it's difficult, things change dramatically. Team, love having you here. You are fantastic. I hope this was helpful. I really appreciate Pete allowing me to be here and uh, pour into you guys. Was that great, man? Did you enjoy that? It was awesome. Is you know spot on. Just what we wanted to uh, to to hear about. Uh, thank you very much, Jeremy, for for coming and spending the night with us here at uh, RLT Denmark the ever-growing trading community. So, hey, thanks, man. My man, you guys got it. Have a great one. You too. Bye. All right, drenge og piger. Uh, giv mig lige et par minutter. Um, så stopper vi lige optagelsen her, og så går vi i gang med vores uh, live uh, stock review, eller hedder det, aktieanalysen hedder det på dansk, så skal jeg lige have min uh, hjerne omsat til, uh, til dansk. Jeg ved ikke, hvad jeg er, men jeg synes, det, her, det var mega fedt. Um, hold kæft, det var godt. Um, hvis I har nogle spørgsmål eller andet, så, uh, så lad os tage det i Slack. Uh, så kan, hvis ikke andet, så kan, så kan jeg få uh, forsvaret for Jeremy, hvis jeg ikke uh, selv kan forsvaret. Jeg står på optagelsen her, så tager vi lige fem minutter, mens jeg lige får opdateret uh, min trading view. Og så går vi i gang med aktieanalysen. Men bare bliv på linjen. Henrik, han kan, han kan lige uh, human beatbox lidt i baggrunden.